four, three, two, one. Woo! Ah! Hmm. I wonder what Apple's up to this year. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Yao, and you're here because you want the scoop on what Apple has planned for 2022. 2021 was an exciting year for Apple, with a ton of exciting developments, including the launch of M1 iMacs, iPads getting M1 chips themselves, the iPad mini being revived from near death, and a life-changing set of MacBook Pros that were birthed into the world, and so much more. So what can they do to top it? Well, I think there's plenty more where that came from, and we're going to break it all down together. Let's start with the iPhone, Apple's flagship product, and what makes them all that money each and every quarter. 2022 may either be a disappointing year or an awesome year, depending on your perspective. One thing I'm sadly expecting is the end of the mini line as a flagship product. Rumors have always held that the mini iPhone sold poorly way back in 2020 when Apple's making their product decisions, and they decided way back then to only make bigger phones going forward. If you watch my iPhone 13 mini review, you know how that sad that it makes me. There's still hope that the mini form factor finds its way back in the form of an iPhone SE in the future, but the iPhone mini's days at the top of the flagship lineup seem to be numbered. Instead, there are rumors that Apple is leaning even further into big phones with a max sized non-pro iPhone for people who want the big phone, but not the big pro price. It pains me to say this, but I think that phone will be a big hit. Damn you giant phone lovers. If you're the sort of person who thinks iPhones are only new if they change the design, I wouldn't hold your breath this year. I expect Apple will hold the industrial design static and greatly improve the innards with new chips, camera capabilities, and all-around polish. Oftentimes, it's the third time around with the existing design that gives Apple a chance to really show what they can do when they don't have to worry about accommodating a brand new shape. So expect four new iPhones that look a lot like the old iPhones in regular, max, pro, and non. And let's pour one out for the mini. 2021 was a very exciting year for the iPad, with four new models launched over the course of the year. 2022 may prove less exciting with only the iPad Air due for any kind of major refresh. With the iPad mini using the more modern A15 processor and also supporting new top-of-the-line features like center stage, a little spec bump to put it slightly back ahead of its little brother could be in order. There's also a chance that iPad Pros could be refreshed later in the year. After a mid-year rollout last year, we could see iPad Pros with the latest M2 chips sometime later in the year. Maybe even see the 11-inch iPad get that sweet, sweet mini-LED screen action that was only saved for the big pros last time. Don't expect any love for the iPad mini, which only ever gets leveled up every couple of years. And with the base model iPad just updated in November, there's no urgency to spec it up again anytime soon. 2022 should be a quiet year for iPad, but with so many solid options to line up, that isn't as disappointing as it sounds. Apple has quietly become a dominant player in the wearable space. People who say that Apple Watch isn't a hit also have to grapple with the fact that Apple is now the largest watchmaker in the world by revenue. Hard to be a failure and also the most successful company in space, am I right? And the AirPods have become just as ubiquitous as the old white wired earbuds were in the iPod days. Actually, given the scale of iPhone versus the iPod, probably way more ubiquitous. The rumors point to a very active year for the Apple Watch in 2022, starting with a refreshed Apple Watch SE. When the Apple Watch SE was first rumored, many thought it would become the low-cost Apple Watch lineup, taking the spot long held by the Apple Watch Series 3. When it was introduced in 2020, the Series 3 held the line, and the SE, while cheaper, couldn't get down to the price level of the $200 S3. And then, in 2021, everyone assumed the Series 3 would disappear, and the SE would move down to the entry-level slot. Instead, it just stayed where it was, at the same price with the please don't buy it, it's not a good device anymore Series 3 just sticking around. Now there are rumors of a new SE, and with that rumor comes so many questions. Will it replace the current SE at the same price point? If it does, will the Series 3 still be the entry level? Will it push the existing SE down the line and take its place in the middle of the lineup? Will it use Series 6 or Series 7 design language? Will this be the rumored flat-sided Apple Watch all the rumors discussed last year? So many questions and so many directions Apple can go with this device. Time will tell what they do, and we get to see where this lands together. Then there are rumors of a new, ruggedized Apple Watch to be sold along the Apple Watch Series 8. 
There's a big market for rugged fitness trackers for highly active people who want to track their activity. Given the Apple Watch's focus on health, there seems to be a strong fit for the market that can make the Apple Watch rugged a big hit. With the Series 7 just receiving a design refresh, I think it's unlikely that the Series 8 will look remarkably different, with apologies to those who are looking forward to that flat side design finally coming out. Apple has tended to keep design languages for their watches for a few generations at least, before making big changes. And while the flat side design looks cool and fresh, the rounded bulb shape of the Apple Watch is iconic at this point. Kind of like the notch of the iPhone or the chin of an iMac. When you see an Apple Watch, you know it's an Apple Watch. I don't know if Apple's willing to give that up for a cool new flat shape. And let's not forget the AirPods. Late last year, Apple revved the base level AirPods, releasing the AirPods Rev 3, welcoming the baseline AirPods 2 for sale. Lucky for anyone whose ears don't fit the 3, but do fit the 2s. That leaves AirPods Pro as the last Apple wearable in need of a refresh. Maybe smaller tips? Better noise cancelling? Although the current noise cancelling is pretty excellent. The latest rumors point to support for lossless audio via proprietary Bluetooth enhancement. I guess it would be nice for Apple's own headphones to support their own lossless sound, huh? Not sure where else they'll take this, but knowing Apple, it'll be super cool when we see it. Now, the last time Apple introduced a new standalone wearable, the watch, Tim Cook had been quoted as saying, the wrist is an area of interest. Now, I didn't say anything like that about the face, thank God, but this looks like the year we'll finally see Apple release their first AR VR focused hardware. Sounds like what we should expect is an Apple take on the Meta Quest 2, sorry Oculus, with high resolution screens, AR pass through, and a lightweight feel. Now I'm going to make a prediction. The first Apple headset is going to be okay. Not amazing, not terrible, just okay. And pundits will immediately call it a flop because it doesn't sell as much as the iPhones. Real insightful. And what Apple will do is iterate on it consistently for years until it is an amazing product that has found a nice little market for itself. What does Apple do best? Make personal computers. It doesn't get much more personal sitting on your... It's personal. Give it five years and I'll bet this thing has found itself a nice little niche. 2022 should be an action-packed year for the Mac. By the end of the year, Apple should be well through their two-year transition to Apple Silicon, hopefully offering an Apple Silicon Mac across their entire lineup. Speaking of that lineup, what's currently missing? Apple's rolled out Apple Silicon methodically starting in 2020 with their base level MacBook Air, Mac Mini, and MacBook Pros. Those M1 Macs blew people away and showed Apple Silicon was going to be a revolution. The M1 iMacs released in early 2021 kept the magic going, wowing people with their super thin design, amazing performance, and yes, keeping that iconic chin at the front. But they saved the best for later in the year, releasing the M1 Pro and Macs MacBook Pros in the fall, and tearing the ceiling off laptop expectations. To say this computer has been well received would be a major understatement. The excitement around these laptops has been palpable, and the continued trend of Apple showing that it's listened to its customers, not just by making powerful laptops, but by doing things like adding back removed ports, hello SD card, making laptops thicker to cruise battery, and bringing back MagSafe for fast charging. The latest MacBook Pros are a slam dunk. So where's Apple go next? Bigger, baby. The last two major Macs in need of the Apple Silicon treatment are the 27-inch iMac and Mac Pro. Starting with the iMac, Rumors have Apple making a new 27-inch iMac with a screen in line with the new MacBook Pros, ProMotion, variable refresh rate, mini LED, HDR, and chips to match with an M1 Pro and M1 Max chip options. There's also rumor that the 27-inch iMac could also feature a model with a dual M1 Max chip for almost twice the power of the most powerful MacBook available. That would be eye-melting stuff, and that would for sure be the computer I'd want most in the Mac lineup. But wait, there's more. Apple also has to rev their biggest, baddest computer, the Mac Pro, and here's where the rumors get interesting. There were talks of a half-sized Mac Pro enclosure, which would still allow internal expansion of some kind, but would abandon the massive case of the existing Mac Pro. And that could definitely work, but that would be a shift from the focus of expandability and modularity of the previous iteration. Regardless of the size of the case, it looks like the Mac Pro would get up to a quad M1 Max chip inside it, with up to 256 gigabytes of internal RAM, and an internal GPU capable of handling some truly remarkable workloads, not to mention all those media encoders. No matter what size case they put in this thing, it will be a beast of performance. And before Apple says goodbye to the M1 generation of Macs, they still need to refresh the small but mighty Mac Mini Pro, aka the space gray one that still has an Intel chip inside. Apple could throw an M1 Pro and Macs, or dual Macs if feeling frisky, in that machine and offer folks a tiny powerhouse of performance that no other small computer could think of matching. And with that, the M1 chip story would be written. Just in time to start thinking about the M2. When Apple introduced the M1 MacBook Air and MacBook Pro and Mac Mini, they just took their existing cases and stuck an awesome new chip inside them. Not bad at all, but for every other M1-based computer, they've done a redesign from the ground up. Excepting the Mac Mini, I'm expecting a similar design refresh for the first M2-based Macs. 
That's right, with M1 Max slated to go across the line by the end of the year, we should also start to see the new M2 base machines going forward, starting right where they started in the first place. Visual mock-ups of a proposed M2 MacBook Air show a super thin laptop using the design language and maybe the colors of the M1 iMax. Visually striking, and if the colors stick, a lot of fun too. There's less consensus of what will happen with the 13-inch MacBook Pro. It's the last Mac in the lineup with a touch bar, and so its days are numbered. But will it be refreshed with a new design, or unceremoniously killed off? My money's on a new design, if only preserve the price slot in the lineup. Time will tell on that one. No 2022 prediction roundup would be complete without talking about Apple-branded monitors. For years and years after the discontinuation of the Thunderbolt display, Apple made no first-party monitors for use with their computers. And while some will point out the fact that two-thirds of their computers sold their laptops, which have screens, lots of people like to use laptops with external monitors at times. The power is in their versatility. And Apple has long pointed people to the LG brand of ultrafine monitors, which offer retina-level displays and sizes aligned to how macOS expects monitors to look. They offload the problem. The problem with that was that LG solved it poorly, with quality issues of various types plaguing the ultrafine series. In 2020, Apple got back in the game, with a $6,000 reference quality monitor launched alongside their Mac Pro. The monitor is super awesome and certainly meets the needs of high-end video professionals in certain workflows, but at the cost and the specs it includes, it's major overkill for the vast majority of Apple's customers. So looking forward, rumors point to three potential new monitors Apple's making that could help flesh out the market for people who want to use first-party Apple monitors with their awesome Macs, and maybe iPads, in the future. The first is a 24-inch standalone monitor based on the same panel as the 24-inch iMac. This would be awesome for lots of Apple users who don't need the massive 32-inch 6K screen of the Pro Display XDR, or even the 27-inch 5K screen of the current larger iMacs. For lots of people, 24-inch is more than big enough, and that screen would likely be their biggest seller. Then there are rumors of a 27-inch standalone screen, potentially to be launched alongside the new 27-inch iMac. If so, and if it matches the expected specs, we'd be talking about a 27-inch 5K variable refresh rate screen with mini LEDs and HDR. It would be beautiful and expensive. Maybe not $6,000 Pro Display XDR expensive, but not as far off as some would hope I'm expecting. And last but not least, there are rumors of a 32-inch update to the Pro Display XDR, likely with mini LEDs and high refresh rate. It wouldn't surprise me if this monitor was even more expensive than the Pro Display XDR, with the original XDR sticking around the lineup to make an even price range. Something like $1,000 for the 24-inch, $2,500 for the 27-inch, $4,000 for the original XDR, $6,000 for the new XDR. We may yet get the Apple monitor lineup we've all been asking for, but it's probably going to cost a lot more than we'd hoped. That's life with Apple. 2022 looks like it's going to be a busy year for Apple, and if you're a fan of their products, which if you're still listening, you definitely are, there's lots to look forward to. Why don't you tell me what you're most excited to see in 2022 from Apple in the comments. And while you're at it, hit that like button, go ahead and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.